for the final round of Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. We're by the seaside. The Dutch circuit of Zandvoort is our host for the final two races of what has been an ultra competitive season. And it's been a wet and windy Zandvoort thus far. Squally conditions all day. Friday was a real test for the teams as we get set for the championship showdown. Silver, gold, and the overall competition all up for grabs this weekend. It is a three-way fight in pro. It's a five-way fight in gold and a two-way battle in silver. The European Cup, of course, part of the global Fanatec GT World Challenge that includes America, Australia and Asia. We've had all five endurance events, four of the five sprint events. There's titles on the line here in two one-hour blasts. In pro, where you can have any category of driver, three crews are all going for the title. Having already won endurance, Timor Bogoslavski and Rafael Marcello desperately want to win the Sprint Cup as well. And it's a title that thus far has eluded them. They have had, though, four race wins this season. I didn't expect, to be honest, what we did in the endurance championship. But, yeah, I mean, it's the great result, I think. And also, our result at Spa, it's really good. Always is not so easy, I mean, in this championship, as you know. Normally we was fighting from the WRT at the end of the championship, but this year it's not like this. We will try our best, so as always. Opposition comes from the Audi of Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller. They're seven and a half points back. They've had two race wins this season. They've got to win both races this weekend. It's not easy. I mean, we saw during the whole season that uh, Mercedes, it's, uh, it's really fast, has been really fast every race, so they were always there. There are not many, many points in which you can overtake, especially with the GT3 car, when everyone is so close to each other. So I think uh, qualifying is going to be the key, and then pit stop where you can win and lose many times. It's not going to be easy, but we try to get it. The Sprint Cup champions for the last three seasons have been Dries Van Thor and Charles Wirtz. This a transitional year for them with BMW at WRT. They weren't really expecting to be in the hunt. We did not um, expect it, though we, that was the aim, of course, to be there and to, to be still in the fight. Of course, we all want to get the drivers and the team, but uh, realistically, I think the team is much more uh, possible. So we will do our best to try to score as much points as we can and uh, hopefully grab the title for the team. All five season-long entrants could win the Gold Cup, and it's going to be a fascinating brace of races to determine the champions this year. Aurelian Panis is the man in charge with Alberto Di Folco. Three victories they have had this year, and they head the championship by six points coming into the weekend. It's really close. It was a nice battle until here. Now it's the last uh, last race, two, two more races. So we are leading, it's the uh, best position, I think, before this weekend, but yes, yeah, very close, so we will push until then. This is the main opposition, the WRT run, BMW of Callan Williams and Nicholas Cruton. They've also had three wins, they're six points back. It's going to be a really tough battle between the two cars this weekend. Well, we try and win, but obviously it's going to be difficult, um, especially with the weather around here very difficult in Zandvoort. The main thing is to keep it clean and uh, try to force the others into some errors and then hopefully get the championship. It's going to be difficult, but I think we have a good chance. Another team in with a chance of winning, Gilles Magnus and Finley Hutchison in the Comte Ram Audi. They had a win in Valencia. They're 14 and a half points off the lead. It's going to be tough for them. It's been a very positive season. Uh, I think we got a few unlucky moments, which cost us a lot of points. But for the rest, we were always there in, uh, in pace. It was very pleasant as well to work together with Finlay. It was the first season together. Let's try to finish it on a high year in Zandvoort. In theory, we still have a shot at the championship. It will be very tough, but we will give it all we got. Nothing to lose. The Silver Cup is led by Alex Arca and Lorenzo Petresi, the category for the young guns of GT racing. They had a double win last time out in Valencia. They've had five wins over the course of the season, but only have a one-point lead. It's ultra close going into race one. Yeah, it's been a tough season so far. Um, I think that we want to become victorious just after, after all. I think we've done a good job until now, but uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be tight. It's just a racing weekend like every other, and I think I'll treat it like that. And I think the entire team, also Lorenzo, we're all settled for anything. So whatever happens, we take it and uh, we try to to gain the title and gain what we deserve. 
The opposition comes from Jordan Love's Mercedes. He's shared the season with Frank Bird and Alain Valente, hence he's on a different number of points from co-drivers, and he's only one point back from the Audi duo. I think we're just going to go into this weekend and most importantly enjoy it, enjoy the challenge. It's the last one for the year and uh, just try and maximise what we've learned throughout the season. It's been uh, toing and froming all year, you know, we've been in the lead, we've been second, it's been one hell of a battle and we always seem to find each other on the track too. So it's going to be a, a last lap Sunday thing, I think. Almost time to go racing. Welcome everybody to Zandvoort. Race one of the weekend in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. With pro, gold and silver titles all on the line. Bronze already decided. There is no bronze category running here because the number of pit garages available, the track license uh, available means that we would just have too many cars. Even so, we have our biggest ever Sprint Cup Zandvoort grid. And there it is, the car's almost being blown off the circuit. You can see just how windy it is. And in the last half an hour or so, we've had rain, we've had hail, we've had sunshine. We've got these really strong winds, 8.8 uh, uh, metres per second. It's getting windier. The track, at least, is drying. David Anderson and John Watson trackside. And John, what a track it is. Amazing, Zandvoort. What a wonderful racetrack. So many fond memories of racing here over many years. Slightly different circuit, now 14 turns, not quite as long, 4.3 kilometers in length, 2.6 miles. And literally, David, you're talking about the weather. We've had all four seasons in the space of the last 10 minutes, and we don't know whether it's going to rain, sun, hail, blow. Well, it's going to blow anyway. It's never stopped blowing <laughs> since I arrived yesterday. It is decidedly chilly as well. So uh, the teams are on the grid, and track temperature is pretty low, you've got to say. Now let's sort out this championship situation because in pro you've got Rafael Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski ahead of Matteo Drudi and Ricardo Feller, but they will start from pole, the Audi drivers, and then third, Dries van Thor and Charles Witt, who are looking, of course, for a fourth Sprint Cup title in a row. Mathematically, Lucas Legere, Christopher Hauser, and Thierry Vermeulen and Albert Costa are just about in with the chance, uh, but it is a very, very tall order indeed. So realistically, it's a three-way fight uh, for the overall category. Lorenzo Petrezzi, who shares with Alex Acker, could come out on top in silver. And yet again, that car uh, has been one of the pace setters. Second pole of the season for Alex Arca. He will start. You can see that the cars are wet because of that recent rain. One of the fascinations, though, now is going to be in terms of tyre choice because the road, as you look at the gold pole car, Gilles Magnus, that's a fifth pole of the season for Gilles Magnus in gold. Uh, John, is that a wet track, a damp track, a drying track? What is it? It's a decision track I wouldn't want to make because, frankly, the track is going to dry relatively quickly. Although the ambient and track temperatures are low, the wind is very strong and that will help the, the drying process. Here we see in the grid it's damp, it's not wet, but on screen rearing, given the information from race director, it is a wet track condition. But good, good afternoon to everyone, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, we will go for two formation laps, two formation laps. That's the voice of the race director, Alain Adam. So two formation laps, just because of the changing conditions from this morning, presumably, John, and that second one will count within the hour. Yes, I think people did run yesterday when the track was wet. That was in the afternoon, but they have dry conditions this morning. And all of a sudden, a big squall came in, and literally it was hailing. I mean, it was bouncing off the windscreens, bouncing off our commentary booth, and now the sun is out. It's glorious. But the <laughs> wind and the chill factor, while the ambient might be 13 degrees Celsius, it feels probably more like about 10 or 9. So the wind is the key and it's coming straight off the North Sea in a northeasterly direction and it's blowing, well, 8.8 .8 meters per second, whatever that means. And all I know is it's pretty strong. And it's pretty chilly. So uh, getting tires up to temperature will be one thing. And the race director, for safety reasons, with this change in the conditions, giving the teams two formation laps. So away they blast. And the formation lap then, the first of them, is underway. Ricardo Feller starting uh, on pole position and it will be Laurin Heinrich in the Komledegar Racing Team Porsche that lines up alongside. Let's look at the grid for race one. Ricardo Feller for Audi, Laurin Heinrich for Porsche ahead of Raffaele Marcello in the Mercedes AMG and Andrea Calderelli's Lamborghini. Fifth starts Dries Van Thor, Fred Vavish goes from sixth ahead of Albert Costa and the McLaren of Christian Clean eighth. Ninth will be Consta Lapalainen's Ferrari and the best of the silvers 
pole position for Alex Arca. He, in turn, is ahead of Patrick Niederhauser and Nikolai Schiergaard. Then the best of the gold contingent, that Gilles Magnus alongside Christian Engelhardt. Valentino Rossi starts 15th. Jordan Love, her second of the silvers on the grid, fighting for a championship, of course, ahead of Nicholas Crittum and Thomas Neubauer. Then Lucas Legere, a long, long way back on the grid. He's alongside Norbert Siedler, ahead of Aurelien Panis. Marcus Pavarud starts 22nd on the grid. Then Jacopo Guidetti and Cesar Gazzo. 26th is Simon Gachet, another Audi driver a long way back. Nicola Marinangeli comes next, ahead of Jesse Salmanaglio and Paul Meyer, who went off late in the session this morning and calls a red flag. Owen Zanotti and Gregoire de Moustier round out a 30-strong grid. And 30 cars round here makes for a pretty crowded house, doesn't it? It'll be very tight getting into Tars and getting 30 cars in will be probably achievable. 30 cars staying on track and exiting, that's more questionable. And with these sort of more tricky track conditions, you could see around the back of the circuit, certainly on the exit of Skyfeld, that's one of those wonderful Zandvoort corners. Then into Master Bob Ryan there, the track clearly is wetter than it is on start finish straight. And so this is the view as you ride with the Boots and VDS Audi around that back part of the circuit, heading up now towards turn 10, which in race trim would be second gear, 95 kilometers an hour, speed building then on this relatively short straight down towards turns 11 and 12, the hands and spark. And look at that, dry as a bone. Absolutely, so it's been very localized, the rain that has fallen. And this part of the track, the returning, well, there are little damp patches, but it's having no effect around slicks here, would be perfectly acceptable. It's on other parts of the racetrack where it would be marginal, especially in the opening lap when you haven't got full racing tyre temperature and therefore mistakes are easily made. And this is turn 14, the bank to Ari Leindijk corner, riding with Raffaele Marciello. So up towards the line, and the cars will complete the first of those two formation laps. And as they do so, the clock now starts. So notionally, the race is underway. Uh, at the end of this next lap, they will grid up properly, ready for the start. There is confirmation of this extra formation lap. So this counts within the time, but at the end of this lap, we will go racing proper. The irony is, you're not allowed to overtake. No. Although the race is underway, it's underway with this additional uh, lap for all the competitors, just to get the head around what the track is like. You know, a, it is varying around the racetrack. Some parts like the straight, doesn't really matter what it's like there, but here coming around Tars, and then as you go through turn three, then down to the, the John Hugenholz, the Hugenholz happen, then uphill, climbing up through the sand dunes, and if you can see the high line is the drier line, the lower line, which not many people will be taking, is clearly the damper line. And this is the pole car, Ricardo Feller at the wheel of it. He knows that he's got to stay ahead of Raffaele Marcello to keep their championship hopes high going into tomorrow's race. And equally, Matteo Drudi needs to stay ahead in stint two of Timor Bogoslavski. So some of the fascination of this is going to be what Lello can do in the first stint. And of course, as ever, keeping an eye to Timor Bogoslavski in the second stint. Expect Marcello to do the lion's share of the work. The spoiler in the pack, though, is that Porsche just up the road ahead. Laurin Heinrich, Carrera Cup Germany champion, sharing with double French champion, Ian Schoenguven. And that car should be very competitive indeed. Now, what is it, John, every time Raffaele Marcello turns sharp right that I can hear? It's like a rattling sound, but well, I don't all, like it. All I can think is that it's the bottom of the splitter on right. whatever side of the car. If he's turning right, it'll be the left side of the splitter. And I heard it on other laps, but um, it shouldn't be so close to the ground. I can't think what else it might be. Uh, so... I can't think of the ride height on one side of the car is any lower than the other side. So all I can think is it's the splitter. So now the cars head down towards turn 11. The Hans Ernst box. There it is again. Yeah. It's something something is rubbing. It, it may just, it just you know, when you put full lock on, because you've got a large wheel, drum, whatever, uh, not drum, disc and tyre, it might just just be catching somewhere inside the wheel arch. That's probably the next best 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 guess that we would have in these circumstances. OK, we're about to go racing, everybody. It is the penultimate race of the year in Fanatec GT World Challenge Europe, powered by AWS Sprint Cup. Jerome Polycon, the boss of Akodis ASP, looks on. And now the cars get themselves into that nose arc formation, ready for the rolling start. That's the scene in the Attempto Racing Garage. As Lorenzo Petrazzi watches Alex Arca, this part of the circuit looking decidedly damp indeed. And they are about to become pioneers as they go racing 
then at the end, effectively in lap one, to get the race properly underway. Tarzan Hairpin, always a pinch point. Let's see if there are going to be any casualties and indeed what Marcello can do off the start as they now rumble their way through turn 14. Speed will build, the pace car as it is will dive for the pit lane. Off the banking they will come, we will get set to go racing. And with a little bit more warmth in the Pirelli tyres, the penultimate race of the season is good to go. The cars accelerate up towards the timing line, the lights will change. And one hour of GT racing, or the remainder of one hour of GT racing is underway. There's a car in the wall in the background already. Somebody pulled out of the draft and got into the pit wall. They've all survived it, but drama into the first corner, three wide. And there, big, big problems on the outside line. That looks like Lucas Legere is out of the race already. Now, I was going to say, good start made by Dries Van Thor, but a better one by Marcello, who gets up the inside of Ricardo Fella. Fella fights back into turn three, rounds Marcello out wide, and up the inside tries to go out there, Costa in the Ferrari, and he looks to make a move. Yeah, so Costa's in the right part of the racetrack now, but Marcello's going to face him down, swoop around the outside, up the sky, but so I mean, a very forceful, aggressive start from Marcello, but he knew he had to do it. He tried almost, he succeeded in getting past Fellow, but again, he was sort of outmaneuvered coming through the Hogan Hills Hairpin Bend. It looks as though also number 18 Lamborghini of Paul Meyer did not make the start. But in the meantime, it was Lucas Legere with damage that we lost. We'll piece all the replays together. There he is limping back. But that's the end of the race, and that's the end of any mathematical hope. And now look for the race lead. Marcello's off the road. He's all sideways. He's in the gravel. This could be a disaster for the championship. The championship leader off the road. Down, 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 down through the order he tumbles. Too ambitious, trying to go the wrong way, the, the long way around the outside into turn 10 on Ricardo Feller, caught the damn power part of the racetrack and just slid off, nothing he could do. And now we have got a motor race, haven't we? Because watching Marcello fight back is going to be well worth watching. Rossi's in stride on the outside, Engelhardt in the green Porsche up the curb on the inside. This much more slippery part of the circuit compared to the first part of the lap. Ricardo Feller trying to get away. That is Jordan Love trawling all over the back of Alex Arca. Ricardo Feller is away and gone. And all pressure that he had from Marcello has evaporated that way around the opening lap. So Feller is in the fine seat and he's got a significant advantage. Coming across our finish line on the second place. So Albert Costa two and a half seconds behind. Calderoni slides up the inside of Heinrich in the Porsche and he makes a stick. And then in fifth place, it's Fred Verviche, sixth is Patrick Niederhauser, down to seventh, Dries Van Thor, who got run out wide on that first lap as well. In eighth place, Consta Lapalina, ninth leading Silver Jordan Love, tenth is Alex Arca, what happened to Marcello? Fifth team's position, what a mistake. Very rarely we've seen a mistake like that in these conditions, but there was a risk that he took, and of course that risk, immediately he got that damper part of the racetrack, he was a passenger, could do, there he is now, look at the pace coming up, up the hill, through turn seven and eight, into Skyfall. Now he's going to make short shift, I suspect, of those cars directly ahead of him, but he knows track limited on certain parts of the circuit when it comes to making an overtake. Many of you will be familiar with the franchise of movies Fast and Furious. That's Marcello. He's fast and he's furious after making that mistake, and he's on a charge right now, picking his way through the traffic, trying to find a way through on the inside, and he's done so. Well, there is the scene of the Owen contact between Porsche and McLaren, and that well inhibited Marcello again. Contact coming back between the two. Car stopped on the left hand side, didn't quite see who that was. Safety car, it's Legere who has stopped. Remember the battered Audi, I think he's just ground to a halt. The safety car has been called, so we're going to go safety car. And Lucas Legere's car has ground to a halt, so they'll all bunch up. That's bad news for Ricardo Feller. Kind of helps Marcello to an extent because it will bunch them all up ahead of him. And that's Legere trying to limp it back with broken suspension. Yeah, I mean, that one wonders what the wisdom is of coming when you're so far from the pit lane entrance to drive it back. And there's a pause oh, that up on the sky field as well. Who's gone off in the... That's Greg Wadamuski, Greg Wadamuski, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. We haven't yeah. seen that car before. So that's another reason why we've gone to a safety car immediately. So pit stop, who's... So the number of cars, one car certainly making its way down the pit lane. That's Gachet, that was Simon Gachet. I wonder whether his car was the one that clipped the wall at the start. Now that we can catch our breath, we might be able to have a look at what exactly did kick off at the beginning because there was one car that hit the wall, somebody or something hit Legere and put him out, so it's all kicked off. But the most significant element, clearly, was Marcello making a rare mistake and being off the road. So he's gained the space of this safety car, got one more place up to 14th. 
got behind Christian Engelhardt, which would be a bigger challenge to these Christian team directly ahead of him before he gets to the top ten. Valentino Rossi, even taking the shortcut going into the chicane in all four wheels off the racetrack up the inside. Right, let's have a look at the start. Look in the background up against the pit wall because there is one car that dives out of the queue and oh, bam, yes. gets sideways and fits the wall. Yeah, but that did but not behind was a totally separate incident from that of the. I think it was, was Leger actually that hit the wall, so that's what it did for his suspension. And there he comes across the road, and there's a secondary contact because he got caught up with the Honda. This is it from another angle? So it was Leger who caught the, the, the damp part of the circuit, slithered into the wall. Uh, there was a Ferrari that got all sideways further back as well. Now look at Van Thor in the red BMW. He was third, but then he gets run out wide. Yeah, he was the wrong part of the exit of Tarzan, so he was just thinking there's a passenger waiting for those inside him to conclude the exit of the corner. In the meantime, Marcello was charging up through the field, trying to get the long way around, coming out of the Hogan Hulls, and then he gets bang, uh, not bang, but side by side with Albert Costa. And this was Marcello's mistake, John. Yes, indeed, on the outside of the racetrack, and you see all of a sudden, where is the grip? But it's non-existent, and he's sitting there as a passenger driving through the gravel, has got to go the long way, or well, he's just going to drive back across the gravel, get back, took the shortcut, made it work for him, and directly behind another, was that one of the BMWs also just catching the gravel at the exit of the corner? That was Nicholas Crutton, which is significant in gold. This is Marcello from on board. He was lucky not to get stuck in the gravel, wasn't he? I think maybe because the amount of rain that's fallen off and on over the day. Oh, look at the opposite lock. He knew, he knew before he got there he was in trouble. It was a big punt on his part, but the gravel fortunately isn't quite as, uh, it's, it's more compacted with the rain. Right, that's Legere back in. What he's given the team is a bit more repair time. But there's no way the car's going to be, even if it rejoins in, in any sense, competitive. It's already lost uh, two laps limping back round. So there is Raffaele Marcello running in 14th place. What they will do with the uh, Leisure Race car is repair it, send it back out to ensure that the car is performing as it did prior to having that contact because then they won't have any other time to run the car until qualifying tomorrow morning. You've got a 20-minute session, so you want to know is your car 100%. That's why they'll have to put the car back on track. You can see there Ricardo Fella sliding just a little bit. Now, uh, in terms of class position, Raffaele Marcello is currently 12th in class, in other words, outside the points. So there's pressure on him, but there's also now pressure on Boguslavski, isn't there, as well, because he is going to be absolutely instrumental in helping to rebuild the race here. It may be the making of the man. Yeah. He, he'll know that when he is given the car, whatever Marcello has done in his recovery, we're now coming up to nearly 20 minutes of this race. 40, well, sorry, just over 10 minutes of the race. We're coming up to 49 minutes to go. And so Marcello, the task will get more and more difficult as he makes his way through the field. And those ahead of him, Engelhardt, Klein, Arca, different class, not worried about him, Rossi. Uh, Jordan Love leading the silver category in ninth place. Then, when you get to eighth position, Lapalainen in the first or the second of the two Ferraris, there upwards is going to be a real struggle. If he can get himself up to eighth place, that would be a pretty strong effort and a recovery from Marcello. Uh, an incident between Gregoire de Moustier and Nicola Marinangeli's Ferrari noted, so suggesting, therefore, that de Moustier didn't get into the gravel all on his own. There might have been a bit of help from the Ferrari. And it is, I think, at this part of the circuit where the Audi is being retrieved. And hopefully before long the road will be clear that we can be back racing once more. The Moustier was in 28th place. We started with 29 in the end, with the demise of the Lamborghini after its qualifying session damage. If things stay as they are, and it's a pretty massive if, this would put Drudy and Feller ahead in the championship by 10 points going into tomorrow's race. Ooh, that wasn't in the script, was it? No. But anyway, uh, the script has been rewritten by Mark Cello, as we see the Audi being craned away. So the pace car, the safety car, quickening the overall pace, but still with the lights on. So for the moment, at least, uh, oh, it's over at uh, Skyflap. The Audi is on right, it's now out of the gravel. A very, very high-speed corner, so understandably that uh, the race director didn't want to leave a car there. Albert Costa in second place, taking a rather unusual line. At the moment, they're also exploring where the grip might be around that part of the circuit, aren't they? Well, I think the grip will be on the bits of the racetrack that are lighter in colour. The dark bits are going to be the wet bits. Uh, the racing line should be getting, in colour terms, lighter and lighter, as even in these safety car conditions, the cars make their way around. 
but again, low ambient temperature, low track temperature. The wind is the, the best ally these competitors have got because that will help on the, the drying process. Now that's Jordan Love, he is leading Silver in the race and were he to stay ahead of Patrese and Arca to the very end will be two and a half points ahead in the championship as well, moving ahead therefore because he came into this race second. But again, there's an awful long way to go but this is how things are at least at the moment. Well Jordan Love is the ninth, Alex Arca is an eleventh, Valentino Rossi is, is the meat and that's a battle, the silver battle sandwich and uh, there's by no means those positions are going to remain status quo. Replay of the first lap of Marcello in this lap. making his move to the inside of Ricardo Fella. Bit of contact between them. Ricardo Fella ran him out wide and Albert Costa nearly into the back as well. Swooped up the inside. Brave stuff that. Yeah, Costa the better line through and out of the corner. But now you go into these turns four, five, six. Raffaele Marcello was not conceding an inch and uh, Albert Costa had to fall back into third place. So we're going to go racing again at the end of this lap. We've heard the voice of the race director, Alain Adon, saying that we'll be back racing then and Raffaele Marcello will no doubt get himself into a position where he can challenge Christian Engelhardt, ready for that rounding towards the Tarzan hairpin. In gold, looking at the championships, championship situation, Alberto Di Folco or Elian Panis will continue to lead, but up to second, uh, if things stay as they are, Finley Hutchison and Gilles Magnus ahead, therefore, of Cannon Williams and Nicholas Cruton. Up to four will be Cesar Gazzo and Adam Atechi. Well, after these, what, three safety car laps, maybe four, everybody needs to be aware that track temperatures have actually dropped in this period, so the tyres will not be anywhere near temperature. Then Marcello took the high line, which might be his preferred line, but uh, he, he did eventually make it work because Albert Costa, who was in the better position on the exit, wasn't able to maintain uh, the pace of the Mercedes, and that's why Marcello could retain the second place up until he got to turn 10, bot 10, and that was his downfall. Ricardo Feller leads Albert Costa, Audi ahead of Ferrari. Third, Andrea Caldarelli, Lamborghini. Fourth, Laurin Heinrich, Porsche. Fifth and sixth, Audi's Patrick Niederhauser ahead of Fred Vervich. Seventh, BMW, Dries Van Thor. Eighth, Ferrari, Constant Apollinen. Ninth, the best Three. of the Mercedes AMGs, Jordan Love, who leads silver. Tenth, BMW, Valentino Rossi. And we are back racing, and Ricardo Feller has gone early. Coming out of turn 13, he will build the gap once more as they come over the line. Racing again at Zandvoort. So we wait to see where 88 comes through. It is currently in 14th position, directly behind Christian Engelhardt in the Porsche. Calderelli's having a defensive on Heinrich, and Heinrich thinks, can he get the nose up the inside of the Lamborghini? Well, he got alongside the rear wheel, but not sufficient to claim any ground. Now makes the cut back to make, not here, but coming into Hugenholz Airport, where he'll take the high line. Calderelli covers that, but Heinrich should have the slightly better drive off. But has he got the pace to get anything with the Lamborghini? No. But he's certainly hassling Calderelli all the way through these high-speed curves up to Skyflock. Nose to tail, Lamborghini ahead of Porsche and the Audi of Patrick Niederhauser is joining the party as well. Lauren Heinrich then tries to unsettle Calderelli in the Vincenzo Sospiri racing Lamborghini as they come now up towards turn eight. And that battle pack is growing because their Vijan Van Thora on the back. Calderelli is not escaping and Niederhauser gets up the inside of Heinrich. That Porsche looked really good this morning when it was dry. In these damp, almost intermediate conditions at certain parts of the track, it's struggling a bit. Well, to me, I think Hendrick's looking at alternative lines, not so much on the entry, but where would he gain on the exit? Looking on board the 32, and that was an overtake, I thought. And suddenly, uh, well, currently Van Thor in seventh place for Vich directly ahead of him in sixth. So drivers are using different parts of the racetrack where they think they can get a bit of it. Jordan Love and Love and that's another back for eighth position. And Love's got to be careful, I mean, he's gone through, but he doesn't want to put himself in jeopardy. So here they come, up towards the end of the lap, Jordan Love's hunting for traction. This part's so tippy-toey compared to other much drier elements of the racetrack. So Ricardo Fella leads up towards the line. This will put eight laps in the book. And it's been a much more dramatic start than we could ever have anticipated. Over the line here comes Tris Van Thor. He's still seventh down towards Tarzan. Behind him, eighth look is Love. Ninth is Lapalina. Tenth is Valentino Rossi. And behind them is Marcello. Well, Marcello's done well to clear those behind him. And uh, he is certainly on a move to get into the top ten. He's got the next car up will be 
it is. I'm going to say Valentino Rossi. It's not. It's the second of the two Ferraris. Rossi has swooped around the outside and got back ahead of Lapalan and so it's the Ferrari now directly ahead of Marcello. So heading now up towards turn seven through Skeflach they go. And for sixth place, Fred Verbiche versus Dries Van Floor. They've raced against each other. They've raced with one another in Audi days. But this is where it's all greasy. And you see behind Jordan Love getting a bit sideways, but he just came into shot in the Mercedes. He, in turn, is keeping Rossi at bay, which means the BMW has got up past the uh, Ferrari of Consolapalina, which in a moment is going to be attacked by Marcello. There, look on the outside. Look down from the drone. Yeah, and Heinrich all over the back of Caldarelli. And at the minute, Caldarelli is, one might say, the cork in a bottle of oil. Six cars. The first two have broken free. They're 2.2 seconds ahead, first to third. Patrick Niederhauser, so he is running in fifth. You've got the beach behind there, Dries Van Thor. And nobody's able to make a move. Van Thor having a little look, but seriously not challenging. Fred Beach runs a little bit wide, but again, it's all about positioning to exit here the area line down curve to get yourself into a better position to carry that little bit more speed off this bank curve to try and get a run down the inside or in this case down the outside for Dries Van Thor. Here he comes then, goes toe to toe with Fred Verviche, he's on the outside line, Verviche breaks as late as he does and goes back through on the inside. I hope that the undercut might open up, it has momentarily but Verviche has still got the grind. Can Dries Van Thor get alongside before he... No! close and then he's on the wrong line for this corner but again he wants to duck down low coming out if he can get the drive off the corner that corner with the banking has become a really good one now because you've got those two lines and it really does promote lots more drama but the big BMW can't find a way past the Audi which has always gone really well around this circuit and it had just enough grunt up the hill up to Skyfleck to be able to hold the BMW behind so Dries Van Thor, nothing he could do his foot to the floor and the idea was just pulling away a few car lengths now we're into this middle sector of the circuit, the circuit where the track surface, apparently, according to all the drivers, has got a different coefficient of grip. Caldarelli again being defensive, Patrick Niederhauser all. Uh... So this is Van Fulk that you're riding with. He's in seventh place. He had a go to get past the beach to no avail. Speed building then now as they come down, uh, approaching 220 kilometers an hour down to the Hans Ernst box. And Calderelli falling back in the pack. What I was trying to say after getting stumbling over my words was Heinrich has actually overtaken on this lap, yep. gotten ahead of uh, uh, Calderelli. So that's where I was going. I, I can't get my words out quick enough. So there's the battle still raging for sixth and seventh place between the BMW and the Audi. Now there, heading back to the pit lane, I think that was Gregoire de Moustier pulled out of the gravel. This lead gap has come right down though, hasn't it? Look, fastest lap just done by Costa. It was 0.285 of a second as they crossed the stripe. It's even less to the eye, and there, big, big dive back on the inside. Fred Verbeek goes back through ahead of Banthorpe. Wow, I tell you what, no prisoners at all taken. Up the inside, Albert Costa, has he got the pace? No, the high line will give you a better exit speed. It looks better down the inside. You think you've got the grind, and then all of a sudden, the extra few kilometers per hour on the high line just carry Ricardo Feller and look a significant amount of gain by just taking that high line. Costa set the fastest lap, even quicker, Lauren Heinrich, now that he's been released from behind Calderelli. He's on a mission there in the background. Now remember that Ricardo Feller is fighting not only for a race win here, but also for a championship. He cannot afford to drop back behind Costa, and nor can the Attempto racing team afford to be giving away even tenths on the pit stop. But remember, you've got Albert Costa, who is a no-prisoners-taken race driver, will do anything he can to get into the lead to win this race. And Ricardo Fellows could be aware that if he finds himself in that danger zone, he should let the Ferrari go and take the points for second place, rather than risk having the two cars come together, cutting a tire down, going into the gravel, or any number of different things that might arise. Strategic driving from Ricardo Fellow will now be the name of his stint. Now fourth, but dropping back is Calderelli. Fifth, Niederhauser. Sixth, this battle between Verviche, Van Thor, and there is Jordan Love in eighth. Ninth, Rossi, and tenth, and a bit stuck for the moment is Marcello. Leading in silver, there he is, Jordan Love, and the so-called Lovebirds, Mercedes. Jordan Love, Frank Bird. Second, silver, Alex Arca. Third, silver, Marcus Pavarun with the Lamborghini again, a BSR car. Down towards Tarzan, lap 12 now. Fastest lap, still Larry Heinrich. So we just got a glimpse of... Valentino Rossi getting pretty close to Jordan Love up the inside goes Boots and Racing Audi. 
Now, that's a position in gold, and that's elbowing back the BMW even more. And don't forget, the BMW came into this race second in class in gold, and it's tumbling down the order. So here, maybe with a problem, Nicholas Pruton, that car just doesn't even have to get up and go anymore. Well, that's a balance for 17th and 18th positions. So Pruton was down to 18th. Panis up to 17th. That's the view from Panis as I did, looking at the menacing nose of the BMW. There was kidney-shaped radiator grills, the famous BMW logo and on through Skyflex, a really little difference between the two cars through the corner, just one was out of it quicker than the other. Cruton is able to catch up, coming into the first of this master box, then into turn nine, take a wide line in to get a, major, a straighter exit, and, well, really, what could Cruton do other than try and come back? But where he allowed that positional change to occur, he'll be kicking himself. So this is for the lead in gold. Aurelian Panis ahead now. It was Cruton ahead on that graphic at the start of the lap. It's Panis ahead now, says Arcazo in third place. But the BMW has dropped again, as you see, down the order just a little bit from where it qualified. And by the end of the lap, the Audi trying to build the advantage. So in towards turn 13, they come. Outright, it is Ricardo Feller still leading the way. And he's just gone across the line. The margin is six tenths of a second. Heinrich has done three fastest laps in a row now. And he's taken lumps out of the gap between second place and third place, so he was going to be very shortly. Uh, what's going on here? 77 and that is positional change. So Rossi has gotten around Jordan Love. Now Marcello directly behind the Silver Cup class leader. Uh, in Marcello is in still in tenth position. Now, this is still the battle for honours in gold, but number 30, Nicholas Cruton, is under investigation for the safety car procedure, so he's just been mugged for the category lead, and now there's a question mark over how the car was being driven under the safety car. Well, that's and something for the stewards to look after yeah. as he tries to come back on Panis, coming up into Skyflock. And also, the pit window is going to be open by the end of the lap, so some might choose to bail early. Well, oh, Cruton clobbers the curb in... Master Bock comes up into turn nine. I mean, that literally is almost on the rear bumper of the Audi. Well, this is the battle pack involving Patrick Niederhauser, Fred Verdiche. You can see how much drier the road is becoming now. The sun has broken through once again. And Marcello is ahead of Jordan Love, so that's a change for now ninth place. So Marcello moving himself up the order and should gain more when others pick ahead of him. Just depends how long he stays out for and where Boguslowski ends up as Matthew Drudy gets ready to take over the leading car. Well, that's a surprise to make an early pit stop, but maybe the team looking at not so much where he is coming in, obviously, in the lead, but where he will be when that car goes back on. And they want to put uh, Matteo Drudy back into the car with literally no traffic around him to give him the benefit of clear track, fresh rubber. And the road will clear ahead, won't it, as others make their pit stops. Heinrich, by the way, four fastest laps in a row now, and he's only six tenths of a second back from Costa. It's down the pit lane comes Aurelian Panis and Nicholas Cruton. So the top two in goal, they were battling on the track. They're in the pits at the same time as well, look. So Callan Williams is going to get in behind the wheel of the BMW. So all a bit frantic, a lot of early stoppers, rather, they're maybe against the... And there is our now notional leader. So the Ferrari Albert Costa behind the wheel has taken the lead. The Porsche they just fought within six tenths of a second of the Ferrari. The Porsche has been taking, Heinrich has been taking significant amount of time out of both the race leader, which is now in the pit, and second place, which is now the race leader. So a good opportunity indeed. Uh, is the 32, is that the 31? 32. 32. It looked I mean, like it was going slowly there. Yeah, I think it's just come out of the pits, hasn't it? Because that car has dropped down the order. And it's now Charles Witt's the wheel. So 32 has made a stop. And this is the race lead battle now. It is Albert Costa in the Verstappen.com Ferrari, run by Emil Frey Racing, ahead of Larry Heinrich. And it looks now as though Costa has been able to respond a little bit on this lap. They're staying out for one more at least as they come over the line. I would imagine both of them are going to stay out in fourth place car, Patrick Niederhauser. Likewise, he's come in one of the quickest cars in the circuit. No, that's the Vichy that's come in, but Niederhauser stays out. And has just done the fastest lap, in fact, so the Audi charging. Calderoni back up to fourth. This puts Marcello into fifth, but of course he owes us a pit stop. Rossi is in, and Jordan Love stays out. Alex Arker is in, who, of course, was on pole in silver that dropped back early on. Right, Maxime Martin ready to jump on board, John. Yeah, so Valentino gets out, he's done his job. 
and assist Maxim Martin get in, get the belts attached. Plenty of time to do this, but it's a case of more haste, less speed. All the various connections, the radio connection, anything else that maybe there will not be any need for a sort of onboard water bottle in this condition in these temperatures. So Henrik has made the charge. He's got himself into second position, but that's about as far as he's been. He hasn't managed to successfully close the gap. It was six tenths of a second. A lap ago, there's not a problem on the left rear or oh, get out of the way, get out of the way. Oh, that's what it was. Was that a non-safe release? Well, well, that we looked at, that's for sure. But what it was, was giving the car the lead back again in goal, because the BMW look came out ahead of number nine, Audi. So, he was second coming in, but back in the lead on the pit stop. So that release kept the BMW just ahead, and it brought back the lead in gold. But that, I think that release will be looked at, because there were two cars in the pit lane, what they call the, the race lane, and the well, BMW just got in ahead of them. So it may just be looked at, but uh, no further action taken. So more bail for the pit lane, and we've now got the Ferrari of Albert Costa in. So Larry Heinrich now takes over the race lead with another fastest lap of the race, and now he's got to push like he's qualifying. Absolutely, this is his opportunity to really use the clear air ahead of him and just max out what he can do. Second place will be, well, in theory, it should be Patrick Niederhauser. And Marcello is now up to fourth place. He'll hang out as long as he possibly can and then hand the Mercedes 88 over to Timo Bogoslavski. Oh, Ferrari, it is rolling. So Vermullen will take over the wheel of the 69. Vermullen is behind the wheel of the 69. As it returns, there we see the car making its way slowly, slowly till they cross the pit lane exit before he can get up to race speed. That's on the inside of the Tarzan hairpin. There's a queue of cars there. Look, so back on track. Now the Ferrari jumps ahead of the Audi. So Matteo Drudi, look at the gap. It's been another seemingly slow stop from the Audi squad. 56.2 seconds, that. The pit stop time. Well, disappointing indeed for all the good work Cap done on the race track. Five moves. second time penalty added to the final racing time, overtaking before the line at the end of the safety car procedure. I confess I didn't hear the car number for I that. I think it was the BMW of... Uh, of Gerson. I think that's right. what it was. OK. Now, this is Heinrich in, so he had taken the lead on the road. And... That's now going to put Patrick Niederhauser into the lead of the race. He has just done the fastest lap of the race now. And it was indeed the Nicholas Chris of BMW. So this now is Thierry Vermeulen, who has taken over the Ferrari and it's got the lead over, look, Matteo Drudi on the pit stops. Now the pit stop time for Vermeulen is a bit of a fib because it's still counting as though the car is in the pits. He's got to transpond the problem, that. So I can't tell you it's pit stop time relative to Drudy, but we know that Drudy's was slow because he's fallen back behind the Ferrari. Well, it was certainly slower than the Ferrari. We don't know how slow. There's the Porsche rolling. So that is going to be interesting because, well, he's got to go from here all around the inside of Tarzan. And here are the two principal yeah. cars he's in contention with. So he should be able to get back on track in certainly third position. Assuming these two battling, and that's Maxime Martin on the outside. And in the 12, that is Nicholas Bert. It is, and then you've got Charles Witz behind them. So the Porsche stays ahead of those three. Uh, but Larin Heinrich finds himself back behind traffic once again, doesn't he? So he's got to catch up to Drudy, and then if he can clear Drudy, try and do something about Thierry Vermeulen, who would be a popular winner here. Absolutely. Uh, in the meantime, Marcello is going to have to come in. We're getting close, yeah. maybe this lap and one more at maximum. So they're going to keep him out there as long as they need to. So now it's Heinz and Guven who has taken over from Larry Heinrich, and Guven's going to play himself in that part of the racetrack, getting much drier. Only really one line all the way through it, but the cars heading up towards now turns nine and ten. At the end of this next lap, we'll have a slightly clearer idea of the order and Martin, whose tyres are up to temperature, is all over the back of the Porsche here. Yeah, that's key. Guven is on a set of tyres which have got to get up to speed. Those three cars behind them all had the benefit of a lap or more to get their tyres up to working temperature. So Guven just doing what he can do and he's got a certain amount of grip. That grip will grow as the lap increases or the lap continues. So comes up entering into turn 13. Uh, not much anybody could do on the entry. And here onwards, 
he's just got to have that Porsche, the throttle flat to the floor to ensure Maxim Martin, the BMW, who knows that his best opportunity to get ahead of the Porsche is on this lap. And if he gives the Porsche any advantage, look at Martin trying to find the long way round. But there's going to be a big ass because the Porsche will end up swooping up the circuit. Martin makes the cut undercut to try and get under the Porsche. This windscreen is filthy. Tears has been this effectively is sixth on the road, but third of those that have made a stop. And Martin dives to the inside into turn three, but he's got the lower line, so Gouven's got the drive off the corner. Yeah, the lower line, shorter line, but it's a slower line. And Gouven did the right thing, he just held the high line and kept the momentum, the momentum of the Hugenholz Herpen Ben and maintains his position. Now, up front, Thierry Vermeulen is a second and a half clear of Mattia Drudy, but Drudy is lapping faster, so they lost out on the pit stops. Vermeulen's pit stop time was 52 seconds, 52.3, four seconds lost by Drudy relative to the Ferrari. So that's why the lead changed, and Drudy's trying to rebuild it as in comes Niederhauser, in comes Marcello. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be key. A, a quick pit stop for the Kudas ASP, Mercedes team, and likewise for the Porsche. But uh, let's wait and see, can this be executed? Raffaele Marcello climbs out, and love to have a word with him about his thoughts about turn 10 opening lap. What would he do different if it wasn't uh, quite so tricky? So Timo Bogoslowski now, this is gonna put pressure on. He's behind the wheel, new tires go on the car. Lolo walks around the back, out of the way, there, heading down the pit lane now, number 25 Audi, the Patrick Niederhauser has given over. Owen Basta and Timo Wojcicki will rejoin the race now as well. It's going to be fascinating for the championship. I think overall they're good as as P Mercedes team will have gained a little bounce. So he comes out. He's made. I mean, he's suddenly from going into the pits, effectively in the lead. But the the, the team have done a good pit stop. Got Wojcicki out ahead of cars that would be difficult to overtake. It's put him ahead of the Porsche. So Marcello has uh, brought the car in and a demon pit stop has effectively put that I reckon into third place because they're ahead of Heinrich now might be fourth depending on where the Niederhauser Bastar Audi is we'll check at the end of the lap but that's been a get out of jail free card for Akonis ASP hasn't it yeah but, but look Bogoslowski is under pressure as we see everybody on their out lap those behind have done now a couple of three laps yeah. tires up to temperature Maxim Martin still threatening the back of Gerben and the Porsche, and both the Porsche and the BMW have got to find a way, they need to find a way around the Mercedes, but Bogoslowski equally has got to make sure, A, he doesn't make a mistake, but also maintain sufficient pace to make it more difficult for those two following cars to, to make any ground. Just wind your mind back a little while, remember that battle for gold, we saw it on the track, we saw it in the pits, the BMW is, as John suggested, being looked at for an unsafe release, remember, we saw Callum Williams dive away, just getting ahead of the Audi, it's under investigation. Now, the Akonis ASP Mercedes hustles on with Bogoslowski at the wheel, and in fairness, he has been able to keep Guggen at bay for the lap. So look at Maxim Martin, pulls out alongside Guggen coming down. He did this a lap ago and he couldn't quite make it stick. Oh dear, the McLaren off, and that's up at turn 10. That's Patrick Krupinski, the team manager, team owner. And where that is, I rather fear we might be getting another interruption to the race. We'll oh, see. Slushy. Sorry, it looks yeah. like he got a bit screwy the under braking. Yeah. And that gives renewed optimism, doesn't it, for Guven, thinking if I apply the pressure, I might be able to have a go. There, Moulin leads Drudy by a second and a half. Erwin Bastar is third, so this is the fight for fourth. Bogoslavski, then Guven, then Martin, then Bar, then Wirtz. And I suppose that the only good news story for the 88 Mercedes is it is ahead on the road. Of the number 40, I'm just going to see where that 40 is. Oh, it's um, the right, it's second place. So it is a full course yellow. It is. Full well, course yellow okay. now. But I think Bogoslowski slowed rather early there. But anyway, everybody was able to avoid drama and the whole position. So we've got full course yellow with that car in the gravel and also off the racetrack, number 54 Porsche. Adrian Delina has had a spin. That's in a really awkward place. That's in a very bad, that's coming into Skyfall. Again, maybe a mirror of what we had seen in qualifying this morning when a, one of the Lamborghinis driven by the local Dutchman went off. So he's got it rolling, there it is. But was that an assist or was that all? I think he was hit because the full course yellow was called and I think Delina responded to it quicker than people behind. But there's the other reason we got full course yellow and that's to retrieve the 112. 
McLaren in the gravel. Kapinski sitting there waiting for a recovery vehicle. The Porsche had tried to get going again. You can see the damage on that left rear. So he did get a hit. Uh, also, fascinating fact 37 is we've gained a car because the Paul Meyer Harley Horton Lamborghini that didn't make the start has now joined in. Uh, and it's really, I think, to give Harley Horton in his GT3 debut some mileage ready for tomorrow. But the car is 12 laps down, but it has now started the race. Yeah, and much the same way that now Christopher Hassel behind the wheel of the number 11 come to you racing Audi. Likewise, was in the pits with that damaged rear suspension has gone back out and the team are going to use this as a sort of a, a grandiose almost a test session to ensure that the car, when it comes to qualifying in the morning, will be in, in, in the same as the 18 Lamborghini to ensure their cars are in a condition that will give them the best shot at a grid position. So there's the incident involving Adrian Delina. He gets that hit from behind. What I think is number nine, Alberto Di Folco. This is on board. The, the, the contact doesn't need to be particularly heavy at that part of the racetrack. You're coming up through a right hand corner and you're beginning to bleed off on the throttle, so the car will be slightly unbalanced anyway. So it, it's difficult to see because there's no obvious sort of sound that you could say, whack, that was clearly a hit. So it's a matter of looking at the bodywork, the right side bodywork on the on the Audi. And there, wow, look at that being dragged out. And hopefully he had the car out of gear. But the way he just pulled it around, it sort of took a half a ton of gravel with it. But the car is out and can get itself under its own power back to the pit lane. But interestingly, there's nothing yet being done about the Porsche. That must be next on the to-do list for the uh, recovery team. So there is the second, sorry, the leading car now, Thierry Vermeulen. They've been knocking on the door of a win all year, but uh, now Vermeulen leads Drudy. And if the safety car that you would anticipate is going to be deployed to bunch them up ready for the restart, that's going to put the Audi drivers right on the tail of the Ferrari. At the moment, by being in fourth place, so Marcello and Bogoslavski are back in the lead of the championship. So really the pressure is on Drudy here to make a move for position. And actually, Erwin Bastar versus Bogoslavski, the Mercedes AMG driver, could be anticipated to gain a place himself. Well, what Bogoslavski needs to do is at worst consolidate uh, his fourth position. And, and then if he's got an opportunity, it'll depend where everybody is positionally once we go under racing conditions. But he needs to be careful because Govan and the Porsche directly behind him will be thinking, I'll have that 88. I know who's behind the wheel. I can have him any day of the week. In the classes, Silver, Frank Bird in Jordan Love's Mercedes leads Lorenzo Patrese and then Maximilian Powell. In gold, it is Callan Williams, but there's going to be that five second penalty at the end. So, really, Alberto Di Folco, number nine Audi, that he shares uh, with Aurelian Panis, leads. Second is going to be Adam Atecki, says Arcazo, and third will be Callum Williams and Nicholas Crutum uh, with that penalty applied. Right, Gemma Scott's down in the pit lane, so too is Albert Costa. He could be heading for his first win of the year here, Gemma. Albert, that was a mega stint. The start was really exciting for us to watch. What was it like for you on track? To be honest, I know in this situation, you know, in these three conditions, I'm always good. And I was everybody like, come on, Costa style start. I say, no, Albert, Albert, keep focus. Don't destroy you this, 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 uh, your year. Just doing a mistake. And to be honest, I take it really calm. My start was good against the, the BMW because the power they have is, is stronger than us. And then in the first breaking, I knew it was dry. So I said, I could, I will attack. And then when I was side by side with Caldarella, I was like, wow, I think my start was good. When I was side by side with Lelo, I say to myself, I go for it. But on the previous lap was quite wet, and I say no, I will not destroy our lap, our championship, whatever, because at the end I'm title contender as well. But I, I keep it safe. He made the mistake, and then I use it again. The car was flying, and it's a good way to recover the bad luck on qualifying because I was coming with a, with a very strong lap, and I could not do this pole position. Now we are leading, so I'm very happy. So let's see, cross fingers. You were so excited as you got out of the car, it was great to see. And there, of course, you were just giving some advice to relay over the radio, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying on the radio, I tell to, to Thierry how was the track. Uh, the last corner especially was quite tricky. And, and now I was just saying a couple of things before the, in case there is safety car coming up now. Because, uh, yeah, uh, you know, things happen no, inside, but uh, yeah. 
I, I hope we can keep it until the end. It would be so nice to close the year with a victory because we, we really deserve it as a crew. Absolutely. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Enjoy the rest thank of the you. race. Thank <laughs> you. So it was a great stint by Albert Costa. It was a very good pit stop as well. Certainly better than you saw uh, from the Attempto team. And a replay here of the start. Great racing, John, this. Yeah, I mean, really, three abreast coming into Tarzan. Dries van Thor on the outside, but it's look up the inside, sneaking his way up, trying to get ahead of Ricardo Feller up into turn three and comes side by side and Feller stood his ground, did not give up and uh, Marcello had to concede. There we see the Porsche finally being craned away. I thought maybe the car would be a runner and get back to the pits, but clearly Adrian Delina had uh, other thoughts, so that car will need to be removed. Two safety behind one of the gaps in the barriers and with what we've got, just 16 and a half minutes of this race remaining. Hopefully in the next couple of laps we'll be back to a race to the flag. Absolutely right. So here is the Dutch driver, Thierry Vermeulen. His father, Raymond, is the manager of Max Verstappen. That's where you get the Red Bull and the Verstappen.com links. There is uh, a little whisper as to whether or not Max might rock up tomorrow to have a look. But uh, lots of other Dutch racers have been here this weekend. Tom Cornell's popped in for a look. Alan Kauf's popped in for a look. But it's uh, Terry Vermeulen, very much a rising star of GT Racing, who is the uh, race leader. You can see the safety car is on track. We're not yet under safety car conditions, but we are about to go to them. That gold order is as it is on the track. Don't forget that there will be the time penalty to number 30 BMW. This is how it is in silver. Frank Bird ahead of Lorenzo Patrese, ahead of Maximilian Powell. Maximilian, who we saw in the championship for the first time at Hockenheim. He's been a race winner in DTM this year and a uh, very, very rapid driver indeed this is how silver looks at the moment two and a half points now jordan loves advantage putting himself back ahead of patrese and arca with ezekiel perez compact and yes he's being in third frank bird of course having missed two events four races uh fourth safety car now we go to safety, so safety car procedure safety car procedure is instigated by race control and straight away, that means they can go faster than that delta speed under the full course yellow top. Yes, and everybody going to catch up effectively to the tail of the safety car. Robert will, will be the first to make that, and then he'll have to run at the pace of the safety car while those behind can run that little bit quicker to enable them to catch up to the tail of, in most cases, it'll be actually Matteo Trudy. Uh, Trudy and uh, Robert were that little bit further down the road, so with the space at this lap, they'll all be, should be, if they're not, I don't know why they're not. Uh, line of stone. Now this is rather provisionally gold because you've got to factor in the ultimate position of that BMW with its time penalty. But at the moment, on the road positions, Defolco and Panis would be ahead by a point and a half from Callum Williams and Nicholas Critton, and then Gilles Magnus and Finley Hutchison third. There's the BMW then leading the class at the moment. But there is this time penalty at the end of the race for safety car procedure infringement and it's also under investigation for an unsafe release. So right now we're on lap 23, we've got 14 minutes to go, there's confirmation again of that penalty to the BMW and as we saw in Barcelona in endurance, a late race bunching of the field like this does somebody with a Damocletian penalty no favours at all. No, I mean, that puts everybody into a difficult situation when you're so closely bunched, then that's the thing about momentum, your usual story, your natural race pace you can't access because you're being determined by the car directly ahead of you and you haven't got quite sufficient advantage and performance to make an easy overtake and then you get the whole backing up process, the car that leads controls the pace of those that are following. So the leader goes by, and now that we are behind the safety car, so it's all bunching. Would this, I wonder, on the restart, give Guven a chance to have a go at Bottles? The safety car in this lap. Going to go racing this time. So it's going to be about 12 minutes when the cars come around. Before the checkered flag falls, there is the onboard route from Thierry Vermoulin's Ferrari up the hill. So this lovely sequence of swings and curves and the curve then up the hill it looks a bit the corner is called skyfield because you're looking skyward as you come into it you can see the marks on the track that are going from left to right that was the 54 Porsche that we think we think may have been tagged but there was no certainly no audible sort of sign that we could tell it was a definite hit 
Now, how is Vermeulen going to cope with this restart? What can Drudy do? He knows that he's got to get the car back ahead. This is the one fighting for a championship. And if Drudy can go forward, and depending on what Boguslawski does, it's certainly going to help. The more points he gets, the better. Don't forget, it's 25 for a win and 18 for second, so it's a big difference. The one problem I think Matteo Drudy might have is Thierry Vermeulen is actually a really quick driver. And we've seen throughout the season, he is not shy about being competitive. So can Drudy apply pressure? Can he force a mistake out of him? Vermeulen leading. Close to a win, less than 12 minutes of the race to go. Is he going to be resolute under the pressure? We're about to find out because towards turn 13 comes Timo Bogoslowski. He in turn has got Ian Schenguven's Porsche right up behind him. Vermeulen busily weaving to try to keep temperature in the tyres. Now he accelerates away. Bogoslowski's got to go with them, but actually, no, Vermeulen has dropped on yet. Flag. Now he does, coming out of turn 14, blast away. And Drudy has got Erwin Bastals out, he tucked up behind him. And Marcello, not Marcello, and Bogoslowski is about to be mugged, he didn't stick to the tail of the idea. Fourth, third position, and Maxi Martin, likewise, trying to find a way through coming down into Tarzan. One place lost then to Gouverne, possibly another one to Martin. But in fairness, Bogoslowski stood his ground, but he gets run out wide, and the BMW is going to go through, is it, is it, is it? Yes, Martin clears him. And that was all because of that restart. Now, Bogoslowski tries to go high to regain, but look, coming up the inside, he got barred as well, so he needs to be absolutely on his toes. Bogoslowski did not maintain that proximity to third position that he ought to have done at that restart, and he, made him, he left himself wide open coming into Tarzan, not only for the Porsche, but for Maxime Martin, to find a way around. That's good news for Drudy then, because even if he can't catch and clear the Ferrari, Bogoslavski has dropped two places. That's helpful for points in the championship. And then look to the inside line. Jordan, uh, sorry, Frank Byrne has a go at Charles Witt, and the Mercedes gets his nose in front. It's a long nose, admittedly. To the inside line is Vitz, and he takes the place back. Charles Witt goes back through and on the inside line as well. Jump back to Simonau's BMW. Now, Simonau trying also to go to. Look at the Mercedes, absolutely Frank Byrne trying, I mean, running strongly, but having to be defensive, Charles Fiat not looking as if he's getting the maximum potential performance from the BMW at this point. And there, look, is Owen Bastard under attack from Gouven, and Gouven's under attack from Martin. Then you've got Boguslowski, Gouven commits to the inside, there's not quite enough room, Martin to the outside. And a good chance for Boguslowski, likewise, as Gouven compromised himself, now the Mercedes it comes up along the outside, but goes, dives back very quickly, covered by the Porsche, back to the left-hand side of the racetrack, and the BMW and the Audi. So this race, certainly for these last podium positions, by no means over. Boguslowski is alongside Gouverne, who is just to the left, and I think the Mercedes might get through, let's see, yes he does, but he's on the wrong line for the next corner, Gouverne dives up the inside of the Audi as well, Martin's gone, look, he's clear, he's away, and now Gouverne is up alongside Bastard, side by side they run, the Porsche has the inside for the slot of Mokabal, now up towards Skyflak this time around on the outside, oh, contact. contact, off goes the Audi! The Porsche avoids him and runs wide, and Bogoslowski's gained two places back. Absolutely, and I'm sitting there, watch what was happening. And he's going to get back on track, but the Porsche may not. And again, the battling BMWs and Frank Berg doing a great job on his return to the seat of that 77 Mercedes. So that helped Bogoslowski hugely, because the two places he'd lost, he's just won back. They both carried on, I think. The Audi went all the way through the gravel and rejoined, and Gouven, although he ran out wide, is still circulating as well. So... It's a pretty charmed life for Boguslowski in this. He might not have been a great restart, but that's just come to him. Look at this. And side by side contact, Porsche got clobbered. Por Audi up the inside, Bata. Really, I mean, you can see how quickly he was going. Both cars get back on here on Porsche. This is the bird's eye view, or the Boguslowski's eye view of all this action out through turn four. Then side by side, was the contact at five, or did it wait until we got up the hill up into his turn? And then oh, he hit the curb on the inside, which pushed the car wide. It wasn't intentional. That just he caught the curb. Car was deflected to the left. Caught the Porsche, and that will be a, a, a tale of woe. Tell you, could have been a whole lot worse though. Vermeulen leads Drudy by three tenths of a second. Third is Martin. Fourth, Bogoslowski. Fifth is Bart. Win. Sixth, seventh is Bird. Eighth is Simonau. Ninth, it is Marco Papelli. Tenth is Giacomo Altue. And out of all of that, what happened? to Ian Schenguven, he's down in 14th place. And Bastard, amazingly, carried on, he's 23rd, but that could have been a whole lot worse. So that could have been a big, big accident. I mean, certainly both cars went off at pretty high speed, particularly the, the 
the Audi, we saw that sliding backwards off the gravel, but got a running and got... 10 second time momentum. penalty to car 26 added to the final racing time, causing a collision in turn one. Well, 26 is Paul Everard in the Audi. This is for the race lead, and it is Vermeulen, but Drudy is hunting him down, isn't it? He's putting pressure on the young gun of GT3 racing. Yeah, um, again, the performance between the Audi and the Ferrari that's made an on-track performance just comes down to the difference between the driving qualities and experience. And certainly, Matteo Drudi has got more experience. We know how quick he is, but Vermoulin has been impressive. So there we see, out of the chicane, coming up into turn 13. Riding on that box out with Matteo Drudi then, who is chasing after the Ferrari as they come up towards the line. Vermoulin last time was 0.382 of a second ahead, but we've only got six and a half minutes to go. So Trudy needs to do something pretty special here. He will perhaps have got the uh, news on the radio that Bogdanowski has just been given effectively two places. And Trudy needs that race win to stand an even better chance in the title in tomorrow's race. So you can see Trudy is pushing everything he's got, but Vermullen pretty much able to cover it. And unless Vermullen makes an on forced error, which he hasn't seemed to have shown at any point, and look how wide Trudy runs the curb on the exit up the hill now through these I just love these corners sweeping left sweeping right up the hill car gets all tippy toe to the top here then you swoop down and a wonderful wonder one of the greatest corners on any racetrack anywhere in the world and then all of a sudden you're almost ejected out of the corner straight up into master Bock. it arrives before you realize it that incident between Bastar and Guven has been noted, but I think it was just hard racing, wasn't it, between the two of them? Yep. That's, uh, the gap was half a second between the leaders at the start of the lap, and a different line taken into turn 11 there by Drudy and Vermeulen. Oh, a bit breathless. I wonder what it's like in the cockpit, certainly, <laughs> what we have seen from our commentary position. The rest of the field really now, so sort of we see the what, garage 59 making up some progress. That's Benjamin Goethe, was 19th, and he gets passed. Maybe 18th in the end of this lap. Gap still half a second between first and second, and we've got five minutes of the race to go. It's going to be close in pro, it's going to be close in silver as well. Paul Love will be two and a half points up on the crazy and after going into tomorrow's qualifying session if things stay as they are. So there is the Mad Panda Boat Sports. Mercedes, that's currently second in silver in the race, and that's for the overall lead. Drudy to the outside line. Can't do it there, but he'll have the inside line for the next corner. This is toe-to-toe, -to -toe and it's crucial for the outcome of the championship. Audi briefly ahead, Audi fully ahead. Trudy has done it. Fantastic. Good, good professional race and overtake by Matteo Drudy. And, and, and like race for a moment, he could have thrown everything away. Could have seen both cars out, but he gave sufficient racing ground and he, he gave up that win, that potential win. But we've still got four and a half minutes remaining, so we don't know. But obviously the pace of the Audi, the pace of Matteo Drudy, sufficient. And that was a well-executed overtake by a driver with so much experience and just so much quality. So that now in the championship is advantage Audi drivers, isn't it? Drudy and Fella now by gaining the race lead certainly helping themselves in the background fourth is Bogoslowski but there's not much more he can do because he's too far back from Marta and he's got to hope that something befalls another car up the road and we are into the final four minutes of what has been a really dramatic race well this car here we expected to see much further up the field well it's up in fourth position right now but because of a variety of circumstances so Bogoslowski what, what, what two what is he 1.7 seconds as he came across at the end of lap 28 and unless something is to perform Maxi Martin the likelihood of him getting close enough to make an over an effective overtake is virtually nil. Here is Bogoslowski then. All he can do now is bank points. Remember, he will qualify the car tomorrow. So a lot of it's pace tomorrow. In the early part of the race will be determined by where Bogoslowski puts it on the grid. Over the line goes Drudy then, half a second clear already of Amula. Martin third, fourth Bogoslowski, then it's Bart ahead of Witt, Bird ahead of Simonau, Mapelli ahead of Altwe. race leader exits so this would give them John the championship lead going into tomorrow wouldn't it Drudy and Fellow would be ahead of Marcello and Bogoslowski that's exactly what they needed and they know when it comes to qualifying tomorrow that either it'll be Matteo Drudy will do the qualifying he is capable of putting that car on pole position where the likelihood of the 88 Mercedes winning pole position is probably less we'll go along with that given the pace that we've seen out of the cars this year Matteo Drudy has been 
on pole position before and he is the man that leads the way right now. Druidi was on pole at Hockenheim and that is the Erwin Bastar Audi in the pit lane. That was the car, remember, that spun through the gravel at Skyfall. Well, it's no surprise perhaps that he picked up a little bit of damage. Might also be for Erwin Bastar's laundry bill to be sorted out as well because that was one heck of a moment. Scary place to go off and you're travelling at high speed and you come up into Skyfleck, you're doing 100, well, in kilometres, you're doing about 210 kilometres before you have to get down a couple of gears and uh, get on the brakes. So the race leader is about to come to the line with effectively two laps that he can ring out of the race now. So to the timing line comes Drudy. In fairness, Vermeulen is not letting him disappear off the road, and then Maxi Marta in a car that started 15th on the grid is still hanging on in there. So a podium here for Rossi and Marta. That'd be a great result, wouldn't it? Very good indeed. So that car, as you say, started in 15th position. And Valentino handed over, I think the car may have been up just about into the top 10. But Maxi Martin's done an excellent job, and again, opportunistic because of other circumstances, has found himself in a very competitive third position, just 1.6 seconds behind second place for Milan, but really, with 1 minute and 20 seconds to go, it's a third position, is the best uh, WRT are going to get out of this, and they would have taken it, and they will take it any day of the week. Love that drone shot. Uh, we had a bit of shuffling going on within second in gold, Adam Atecki and Alberto Di Folco. Uh, that's because Dean McDonald has dropped back overall, so they've uh, all gained a place relative to one another. And here is the next little back of pack. It's, it's Callum Williams on the back of Giacomo Alto, who's on the back of Marco Mappelli. The BMW leading gold on the road, but then you've got that penalty to apply post-race. It's time for one more lap after this, but it's going to be Adam Atecki and Cesar Gazzo, I think it was saying, uh, who are going to pick up the win within uh, gold, and that will be their first victory over the season. So they've got a spot, they've got a 1.1 second advantage over the number nine, Boots and Audi. Again, it's a question of don't make any mistakes, bring it home. And for Mullen, well, he lost that position by a really well executed pass by Matteo Drudi. Once the gap has, it's a settled gap, and Vermillion's got no more to give, and Drudy doesn't need to do any more to consolidate on his final lap. Race leaders go down through the Tarzan hairpin, then Drudy to Vermillion, seven tenths, third, Martin, fourth, Bogoslavski, and then behind the Mercedes is Nicholas Bart. Big dive there, you saw Altwe and Williams going side by side for tenth place. The drone is on the chase again chasing Maxi Martin, who is chasing after their Muller. This is the view as they head through the Rob Slotomacher box and then up towards the Schneidler. That is Martin running in third place, but a really interesting race with, with big implications for the championship we've enjoyed here. Yes, I mean, an excellent job by the number 40 Audi. They've just, I mean, they've done what they had to do. They came here, the Tresor Orange One racing team attempt to run Audi, so they've got the race. Well, look, the gap has actually marginally come down but more because I think just seeing Matteo Drudy just doing the sensible thing and driving to the pace of the pursuing car and there's no likelihood of any change of position it's all now a matter of just come down pick your brake spot turn in get on the throttle exit the chicane you only two more corners and the checkered flag it's been a great drive early on by Ricardo Fella really good drive in this second stint by Matteo Drudy the pit stop I'm sure will be looked at because not for the first time this year we've talked about Attempto losing time in the pits and a good drive also by Thierry Van Moulin, but not good enough to stop the Attempto team coming through for victory race one at Zandvoort it's a win for Matteo Drudy and Ricardo Fella Audi wins in Holland Drudy and Fella victorious Van Moulin and Costa second Maxi Martin, Valentino Rossi third ahead of Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogostowski fourth. And that is a result given that we had the car. What, 20th after Marcello went through the gravel? Fifth to uh, Nicholas Bart and Fred Verbiche. Sixth, Charles Witt, Dries Van Thor. And seventh, another winning class for Jordan Love and Frank Bird. So, excellent result for that silver. Mercedes, Frank Bird and Jordan Love. So, there is our race winner. Calmly makes his way now for the first time in his stint. So up the hill, and there is the car that was lost out effectively, the 88 Mercedes, that error by Raffaele Marcello going into turn 10 on the opening lap. It caught the damper part of the racetrack. Ricardo Feller delighted indeed. And look and watch. Oh, well, a, mo a modest amount of curb, nothing that would be or deemed to be a track limit abuse. So that's done at the chicane or the Hans Ernst Bock 
to give it its correct title. And sitting back, you can see this, the, how relaxed Matteo Drudi is behind the wheel. He is just his seating position, his head position, just taking it in his stride. And in gold, the Boots and Audis switched around at the very end. So Alberto Di Folco and Aurelian Panis got ahead of Adam Atechi and Cesar Gazzo to win and drop into third, even though they won on the road, were Cannon Williams and Nicholas Crutton. And I suspect that might well have been a strategic uh, place change of Boots and VDS to help number nine get closer to winning the championship. I think that that's a correct assumption on your part. <laughs> Very diplomatically put, John. So the drivers, and there you see the silver winning car, uh, making their way back to the uh, pit lane. Uh, welcome back to the championship, Frank Berg. Really feisty drive, that. And, uh, of course, he missed Valencia. He missed Hockenheim after the death of his father. So it's good to have him back in the championship. And he's back with a bang, isn't he, with a win? Yes, excellent drive by both drivers, Jordan Love and Frank Bird. So they should be delighted with their afternoon's work. They've got to do it all again in 24 hours' time. But, of course, the key will be qualifying, that 20-minute qualifying session. On Sunday morning, we have no idea what the weather's going to be. It looks like it might be wetter than it's been so far today. But whether that's going to be wet in the morning or wet in the middle of the day or wet in the afternoon, well, nature will surprise us, no doubt. Well, I think that race delivered far more than people were anticipating around Zambor. Great to watch and seize the results. Ricardo Feller and Matteo Drudi, the winners, ahead of Albert Costa and Gary Vermeulen, with Valentino Rossi and Maxi Martin taking third. Fourth, really good recovery after being in the gravel on lap one. Rafali Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski. Fifth, Fred Vavish and Nicholas Bart with sixth, three fan four and Charles Weirs. Silver winners were seventh, Jordan Love and Frank Bird. The gold winners were 11th, Aurelian Panis and Alberto Di Folco. And that's good news for both uh, Jordan Love and also the crew of Panis and Di Folco in their respective championship battles. There is the team owner, Arkin Arca, in the black jacket with Matthew Drudi and Ricardo Feller, celebrating a win and, crucially, the championship lead with one more race to go. Real cat and mouse sort of a season, this. Uh, that's win number three of the year for the Audi drivers, and they are now two and a half points to the good over Marcello and Boguslowski with Dries Van Thor and Charles Wirtz next. Then it's Gary Van Ullen and Albert Costa uh, with Lucas Legere and Christopher Hauser behind. Sixth in the championship now, Valentino Rossi and Maxime Martin after another podium, third in today's race. So really dramatic race, and Alba Costa and Thierry Vermeulen there for second place. Now let's try and get uh, a word with our race winners. Matty Adrudi and Ricardo Feller are victorious, and uh, Gemma Scott is down there. Boys, congratulations. That's exactly what you needed to put you ahead in the championship going into tomorrow's race. I'll come to you first. Ricardo, that pit stop was uh, a little bit slow, it seemed. What was going on at that point? Well, I think we came in too early, first of all, and then the pit stop itself was not ideal. I overshot quite a bit because I was underestimating uh, the grip from uh, from the pit lane here. But in the end, it worked out. Mattia did an awesome job uh, overtaking the Ferrari. is super difficult, especially here. Uh, he made it, so uh, yeah, he's the hero today. And uh, like you said, very good for the championship. Yeah, I mean, that was some overtake. You know, the pressure on you there to get ahead must have been high. Yeah, yeah, it was not the easiest uh, stint of my life, for sure. Uh, I was surprised in the car how much time we lost in the pit stop. I think Ricardo said everything with it. Maybe slightly too early when the track was not completely dry yet. Uh, but it worked out. I mean, the important was to get the win, uh, the pole this morning. So today we got the maximum point we could have. Uh, and we try to do again tomorrow the same. Absolutely. Well, good luck for tomorrow. Get a good rest tonight, hey? <laughs> So they go into tomorrow's race as the championship leaders then. Mike, where and do you want me next? That is a third victory of the season for Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller. So good job done by the Audi drivers. And the winning margin just over a second. And Thierry Vermeulen, a mature drive, John. So an excellent drive indeed from the young Dutchman. And uh, he was under pressure. And I tell you, Matteo Drudi was not going to be denied. He, he worked hard to get that car into the correct position. It all began it been into Tarzan. It took a little two or three corner sequence, but he got the job done. And once he was ahead, then all he had to do was just basically keep his pace to the pace of the Ferrari. Didn't have to do any more. 
knew that Vermeulen in reality wasn't be able to come back. If he did come back, it was another problem to find a way around. And I think that probably Drudy had a little bit of time in hand. He didn't need to extend the lead to 10 or 15 seconds. Wasn't going to prove any point. So the team's gathering at the foot of the podium, ready for the ceremonies. And uh, a very dramatic race indeed. Really good effort also, as we've been saying, within the uh, silver winners. But what about Albert Costa and Thierry Van Moulin, second overall there with Jan? Boys, that was an incredible race. Really stressful for you there in those low closing moments. Matthew got you, but you were driving at full attack. And let's remember, this is your third year of racing, right? Yeah, it was a nice last stint. Um, yeah, the pressure was okay. I just made a mistake, uh, look, like into turn 10. Um, so yeah, it meant Mattia got me. But at the end, I think uh, the one to thank is Albert and the team. We, we really struggled yesterday and to come back like this today, first dry laps for me in the race. And uh, I was quite happy overall uh, with the race. So big thanks to the team and Albert. I think, uh, yeah, P2, of course, uh, we all want to be on the top spot. But luckily, we got another race tomorrow. Absolutely, another race to try and get that top spot tomorrow. Yeah. He will be the man to qualify tomorrow. I believe in him. And this is part of the job, no? At the end, he's very young. He started his career three years ago. He made a mistake. That's it. I'm angry, but I have to accept because it's part of the game. It's part of the of the learn process. I did these mistakes in the past, and he will learn from it, I'm sure, because he's, he's smart enough to do it. So he needs to, uh, to keep believing on himself, learning, and move forward. Tomorrow is another chance. Absolutely. Well, congratulations today, especially at home race for you, Thierry. Yeah. Great result. So we second overall, and uh, Albert Costa being uh, content and very mature about all that and working with to, to, to bring on his young co-driver. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to turn around and say, oh, well, you know, I wouldn't have done that. I could have contained Matteo Drudy, but uh, it's all about learning. This is where we stand in silver with a race to go. Jordan Love is the class leader by two and a half points from Lorenzo Petrezzi and Alex Arca. Out of the hunt, but third, Yessi Salmonaldio and Ezequiel perez Compank ahead of Frank Bird and then... Next come Leonardo Moncini and Jacopo Guidetti. So it's between Love and then Patrese and Arca going into tomorrow's final hour of the championship. And of course, with a point available for pole in the classes, it could be a different situation before we even get to the race itself. It could be certainly closer. What about our silver class winners, Frank Bird and Jordan Love with Jam? Boys, congratulations. That's a class win for you. Frankie, what a comeback for you there. That drive is insane. Yeah it, was, yeah, it was mega. Jordan did the hard work, really. I just had to bring it home. But um, yeah, great comeback drive. Um, wish they were all as good as this. Back to um, P1 on, in the silver class. And uh, I think we had a good position overall. So um, thanks to the team that did a great job and Jordan also. So uh, more of the same tomorrow. Absolutely. Jordan, the start was tricky. The conditions were all over the place. Wet in some parts, dry in other parts. And a lot going on out there. Yeah, obviously, first of all, it's, uh, it's great to have this bloke back. Um, super happy. We're having good fun this weekend. So, yeah, the track, the track start was tricky. So, uh, but um, yeah, we got some work to do this weekend. So we uh, we didn't really take uh, take. We took a lot of risks, to be honest. At the start, it was it was good. Paid off. So got to do the same again tomorrow. Congratulations. Get yourselves off to the podium. Thank you. So Frank Bird and Jordan Love are silver category winners, and the Hout Racing Team Mercedes was given a fair work over. Yeah, both drivers, excellent job. Jordan Love had the more difficult task because the track was in those changing conditions. So when Frank Bird was given the wheel of the car, he went out and did what he was asked to do. Brought that car home, seventh overall, great performance, but more crucially, more importantly, winning the silver class. And also taking Jordan Love's chances of winning the championship in silver to uh, an even greater position going into tomorrow. What about gold? Class winners are there. Aurelio and Alberto, a class win. You look freezing. <laughs> it is cold out here. But that was great right at the last minute to bring that into that first place. Yeah, it was a very tough race. We also had a problem to the rear left tyre. I don't know what is happening. But at the end, we managed to finish P12 over and P1 of goal. It's very good for the championship. And now we have to push like crazy for tomorrow uh, and try to win this championship. Absolutely. Aurelian, right down to the wire. Yeah, yeah, it was not easy, eh? to be honest, it was not easy. The start was really tricky on, the, on this condition, but at the end, yeah, it's a win in Gold Cup. So, so yeah, let's see tomorrow now. Absolutely. Good luck and thank you very much. So rather chilly, Aurelian Panis celebrating uh, a victory. And this is how we stand in gold. Then Alberto Di Folco and Aurelian Panis ahead of Callum Williams and Nicholas Critton. That margin has stretched. That was a race that Williams and Critton had to win, but the time penalty picked up for the... Uh, 
safety car procedure restart has gone against them. The uh, unsafe release was looked at, no action taken, but it was that safety car procedure that uh, did for them early on. So that penalty dropping them to third in class. Drivers then heading to the podium. There's more action on track to come here at the uh, Zanvoort circuit, but the podium ceremony is the pro gold and silver getting ready. And the drivers now being called forward. And there for third place, Maxi Martin and Valentino Rossi step forward. That sounds a rather popular result, doesn't it? <laughs> I wonder any, are there any Valentino Rossi fans in the, in the, in the podium or up on the, uh, the ground? Says, you bet there are. And an absolutely delighted Valentino Rossi, grinning from ear to ear, Albert Costa and Thierry Vermeulen. That'll be a popular place as well uh, for second because of the Dutch connection, young Dutch driver Thierry Vermeulen. And then the winning drivers will be called forward, and they are Ricardo Feller and Matteo Drudi. The Audi drivers then for the Trezor Orange One team, the Attempto Racing Run car, and there, Matteo Drudi. Behind him, Ricardo Fella. Shake hands with everybody and head for the top step of the Zambort podium. Honours in race one for Ricardo Fella and Matthew Drudy. German team, Trezor Orange won, the Attempto Racing Squad, the uh, National Anthem played. And now Angelo Carazio of AWS steps forward to give the trophies to a very, very happy Valentino Rossi. Uh, Maxi Martin taking it all in his stride, but th the pleasure of Valentino's face was there to see. And that's a really good team effort. I think it's an excellent. I mean, Martin in particular, and not fair to single one over the other, but Martin made the, well, they made, he made his chances, he took them. Valentino had some issues earlier in the race, but he brought the car in in the top ten, handed it over another great pit stop by WRT, got that car turned around and gave them ultimately the opportunity to get a podium. The team has received the trophy, and that means that the victors now will receive theirs, and the championship lead as well, heading into tomorrow's showdown. Mattia Drudi, Ricardo Feller win at Sanford. Champagne awaits, and do they spray? But of course. Audi, Ferrari, BMW, Mercedes, Audi, BMW in the top sixth. Drivers all huddle together for photographs, and then the champagne awaits. So Ricardo Feller, Matteo Drudi, I think might get a soaking here from Albert Costa, who <laughs> creeps up behind them. I think he aims first at Valentino, then at Matteo Drudi. And then gets his own. <laughs> Talk about being a rock and roll star. Albert Costa's got everything That's he it. needs in his uh, personality to be one of those. Uh, Valentino Rossi, who is now able to stand there as a GT driver, not just as that bloke from motorbike racing. He has come on hugely in the two seasons he's been in SRO GT racing. Undoubtedly, and I think the moment, the most important moment for Valentino's career this year was that great drive he had at Brands Hatch, then following it up by a yeah. victory in Mazzano, and it just got better and better and better. And it's, you, you can't come out of a career on two wheels into a highly competitive race series and expect to be at front. Well, it's been a great drive by both Maxi Martin and Valentino Rossi for third. Thierry Vermeulen and Albert Costa celebrating second place. And Matthew Drudy and Ricardo Feller taking uh, their third victory of the season and with it the championship lead. And it's going to be between those two drivers and Raffaele Marcello and Timo Bogoslavski for the title going into tomorrow's final one hour race of the season. It's going to be a really dramatic way to end the year. For now, though, the top three teams are all smiles as they make their way off the podium. And we'll look forward to race two from Zandvoort tomorrow. Bye for now.
podiums await here at Zandvoort. The gold podium is next. And the winning teams will all be brought forward in reverse order. And the frustration, I'm sure, is palpable for Callum Williams and Nicholas Crutton. Winning on the road, dropping to third and losing touch in the championship. Yeah, losing it by a penalty of five seconds. You wouldn't think five seconds would lose your potential class victory, but that's what it is. That's how competitive this championship is. And, uh, well, you know, it's a tough series. Decisions get made and, well, you live to regret them, unfortunately, and that could be the loss of your championship position. Also look rather po face, Adam Oteki and Cesar Gazzo, who I think were told to give away a possible victory for their teammates. They're all smiles, no doubt, because it is going to be a win uh, for Aurelian Panis and Alberto Di Falco, crucial to them winning in gold. But there aren't many joyous faces there, an awful lot of emotion on everyone's face. I mean, uh, it's not, nobody ever wants to give up a position, especially to your teammate, but look, it's a team sport. Yeah. And in these circumstances where a championship is you know, being fought out down to the last position, then that's what part of the deal has got to be. The winners of the Gold Cup, Alberto Di Falco and Aurelian Panis, here at Zambia. So the winners then await their trophies. And Aurelian Panis and Alberto Di Folco then taking the fourth victory of the season. As Angelo Monsetto of AWS hands over the trophies. The BMW drivers disappointed to say the least, having won on the road but finishing third on corrected times. Gazzo and Eteki disappointed because they were leading and end up second and don't get a maiden win. Boots and VDS team representative sanguine about what they've had to do to help those drivers on the top of the podium, both of whom are cold, as they admitted in the interviews, but they are the winners. Aurelian Panis and Alberto Di Falco, victorious in Gold Cup. As podiums go, I can't really find many happy faces, though. Well, I mean, you have to contrast that of the <laughs> overall winner. I mean, the, the joy in the face of Maxim Martin, but particularly Valentino Rossi. Do you think Valentino Rossi had won another World Championship, not yeah. got a third-place podium? And no-one's in the mood for hanging around and celebrating. Bye, going, not happy, bye, I'm off, <laughs> see you, bye. So that's not the best party in the world. Just boots some BDS, race engineer and a couple of mates, as it were. Adam Atechi and Cesar Gazzo at least are on the podium. And that podium has one more celebration for it, and it's going to be in silver. And the champagne is brought out, the trophies are brought out. And for third place in the class, it will be Jesse Salmonaltio the Finn and Ezequiel Perez Compank. Ezequiel Perez Compank, who's of course been a real mainstay of GT racing, and he's raced in this, he's raced in endurance this year, he's done the German Championship, a very, very busy GT racer, and uh, down the pit straight, you can see activity on track, it's a very busy Zandvoort, despite the weather, at least it's dry now. So out come Ezequiel Perez Compact and Jesse Salmanaltio for third for the Mad Panda Motorsport team. Second place will go to the Trezor Attempto Racing Squad of Alex Arca and Lorenzo Patrese. It's another podium, but they just lost the edge in the championship to one of the two drivers that will stand on the top step because with help from Frank Bird, Jordan Love takes another victory and with it just edges away a little bit further from those two in the silver championship. And they're all smiles. The band is back together again after a couple of months break. Frank Bird and Jordan Love win here in Holland. Mercedes drivers victorious for the Haupt Racing Team, the German squad. It'll be the German national anthem, therefore, that plays. Jordan Love and Frank Bird, the Silver Cup winners.
so the winning drivers on the podium and a great job done by Frank Bird and Jordan Love to come out on top. Action tomorrow, of course, will start with the qualifying session for the final race of the season. Qualifying is on track at 9.30 local time. We'll see you for that. But for now, from John Watson and David Anderson and Gemma Scott in the pits, it's goodbye from all of us from Zandvoort.